known as overview of committee reports, because we ain't gonna spend much time on this, and uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about it. Every one of our board meetings, we talk about what our strategic goals are for the years, and often they, often they change. But this year, they really stuck, because we've been doing a lot of work on these. The, the first strategic goal that we had was our NEON CRM implementation. That's our new membership. Uh, system. We'll talk about that a little bit. Um, staff committees, staff our committees that, that, that do work, uh, basically reinvigorating our committee structure. We're, we're working on that. We'll talk a little bit about that too. Transition to new leadership. We're talking about board elections and new officer elections. It's extremely exciting. And the board's been around that all year. And then also just in general, our vision for the Vergers Guild moving forward. If we look at the committees that we've got, we've got a, I think, a robust and broad set of operational committees. I think the structure is extremely effective in uh, basically carving down the amount of work that needs to be done into different buckets. Uh, we haven't always been successful at this. We've tried different ways of doing it, but, but I sure am feeling good about it. And I thought I would just go, th go through first and just talk about real quick the folks who are involved in these things and what's involved. And if you would look at these, the thing that I would love is if, our, uh, if everybody watching this would think about where you might plug in and uh, throughout this year and next year, uh, get in touch with the folks that are on these committees. They're all listed on the website and, and try to get involved. The, uh, the annual conference is headed by John Whitaker, who is vice president, and that's a, a typical role of the vice president to do the annual conferences. And John's going to have our next report, so I'm not going to steal any of his thunder, but I can't wait to hear from John. Uh, our chapters, as most of you probably know, some may not, we have about 15 or so chapters of the Vergers Guild that are aligned with dioceses throughout the Episcopal Church uh, and dioceses worldwide. Now, we don't have any chapters that are worldwide, but if we did, it would be uh, exciting. Uh, the thing that we love about chapters is it's the idea of of putting some responsibility in the hands of the diocese for some of the work that the guild does. And we've thought about uh, helping uh, maintain our membership lists on the diocesan level and having chapter support for that. Right now, the chair of that is open. We've got uh, Richard Parker and Rich Lamlin. I don't know if they're here. I think Rich Lamlin is here. We're chairs of this together for years and, and, and we've still been looking for somebody to pick up the, the, uh, the mantle on this, but it's, it, it, it actually is, I think, a very, very cool uh, committee. I think everybody knows Michael Sanchez from Verger TV, from all the emails that come out, our communication and marketing team, and I think this is one of the real bright spots in the committee structure is it's a very good working committee. Our Episcopal Relations Committee has typically been uh, involved with past presidents. Margaret McClarty is our immediate past president. I've been working with her for the past couple of years and will begin to move into that role uh, as well, uh, working with the Episcopal Church here in New York and also nationwide to, uh, to uh, improve the relationship between vergers and our clergy. Uh, that reaches throughout seminaries, uh, lots of other things, pretty cool stuff. Finance with Ann Davis McLean, our treasurer. We've heard from her. I can't imagine our hands uh, for finance being in better hands than with Ann Davis. And uh, of course, Duke Dutille has been a former treasurer and financial secretary for, I think, since time began. Uh, I think maybe that since uh, 2010 when he was uh, first on the board. 
general convention, uh, with the uncertainty about general convention, uh, our slots are open. We don't know what will happen in 2021 or if general convention will be delayed. We may have heard and I don't know. So if I'm missing that, certainly we'll, we'll follow up. Our governance committee with Vion, thank God for Vion for keeping us in step with our bylaws and making sure that we're following the rules because that's uh, for us, integrity is a core value of our board and everything that we do. And Vion's been a huge part of making sure that that happens. John Townsend is chair of the Guild Shop and also uh, John is actually board liaison of the Guild Shop and Stephen Rowe. I hope Stephen's on the on the call. I'm, Stephen, I'm not. If you are, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna embarrass you. But I gotta say, uh, the Guild Shop is running so well. Uh, Barry Norris ran the Guild Shop for years before Barry. It was Bill Gleason. We've always had strong. A dedicated leadership in the guild shop, which is really what it takes. It really is a little shop and it's got stuff and it has to be shipped and curated and all that kind of stuff. You guys are doing great. The fact that the guild shop now is part of our uh, membership system technology infrastructure is awesome. We'll talk a little bit about that later. Uh, I'm acting chair of the membership committee now. Martha Sue Blythe was chair. As I mentioned earlier, she had to step down from her board position uh, for personal reasons. But I want to really take a minute. I know Martha Sue's not on the call, but I really want to thank Martha Sue and all the work that she's done this year. We would not be on Neon CRM. Our, we would not be on our new membership system without the work that she did. Um, all of the products in the guild shop had to be moved into uh, the new guild shop. She did all of that. All of the uh, project planning around getting it rolled out, she helped immensely with the negotiations with Neon to do that. So I really want to give a shout out to Martha Sue Blythe for that work and uh, make, it, make it known that it wouldn't have happened without her. Um, on the technology side, uh, I'm... Uh, we are eliminating a lot of the more complicated technology that we've had through the years that I've been responsible for. So we're kind of mothballing that, replacing it predominantly with Neon. And uh, you remember Albie, uh, Albie Bell, who got the, the information over to me on how to fix uh, Zoom. I've already emailed him and said, we need help on the technology side. And Albie, I'll put you on the spot. He said, yes. So we'll hopefully we'll have some good stuff there. And then we'll wrap up with the training committee with Duke. And I think Walt's on that committee and a few others. We're doing a phenomenal job on training. You can just look at the number of fellows that we have. It's good stuff. I'm going to leave it at that for now. And we're going to put the written reports up on the website. We'll send out an email when those reports are up. I have them all here. I need to get them on the website. I'll get the tech... I'll get uh, Albie and the uh, technology committee to get them on the website. Let's move on. Uh, we are now going to switch to, I'm gonna actually stop sharing. And Michael, I think you are gonna take over as sharing. Are we gonna hear from John? I think we should hear from John. John, where are you? I think you should set this up. Just a minute. Yeah. John, where are you? I'm right here. What's going on? Tell us about what we're about to watch. Well, uh, fortunately, through the uh, marvels of modern science and being able to pre-record, uh, we're going to be talking about not just next year's conference, but the next five years' conference. Woo! No longer sitting on the edge of our seat wondering what it's going to be next year, year after next, year after that. We're looking at a five-year plan. So without much ado, uh, let's go on with the pre-recorded film, please. All right, Michael, are you set? Yep, I'm getting that set right now. All right, thank you. All right, and uh, if you can see my screen right now, can I just get you to show me a thumbs up, please? Perfect. Okay, here we go. 
I'm going to shut my mute off first. All right, here we go. Hello, my name is John Whitaker, and I'm your Vergers Guild Vice President. I'm here today to talk to you about future conference sites for the Guild for the next few years to come. But first, let me offer to you my concern and prayers for those of you who, are, who may have been affected by the pandemic this year, to those of you in the West who've been afflicted by the fires, and to those of you who have been affected by tropical storms in the South, and to those communities who have been torn with social unrest, we pray for the spirit of health and for brotherly love to prevail. We all look forward to the days when these conflicts, plagues, and natural disasters will be a faint memory. Saying that, with the hope and expectation that for 2021 and in the years following, we will be happier, healthier, and wiser. We have continued to plan and organize venues for the Verger Guild's conferences for the next five years. And breaking from the tradition of announcing the next year's venue only at the end of the current conferences, we in the board felt it is no less exciting to be anticipating the upcoming conferences for the next several years. We've never planned this far out before, but in doing so, it is our hope that this will allow you and the conference hopes, hosts to better plan for the future. And having the annual meeting available by virtual means, such as Zoom, we can increase overall participation and involvement for those who cannot be physically there. Oh, the things that we have learned this year. So without further ado, the conference site for the 2021 is really no surprise. Seattle. Diane Carlisle and her conference host team have done a wonderful job in having a dry run this year, and they will polish and perfect the conference for 2021. So we don't have to miss the flying fish at Pike Place Market or a cup of joe on the Puget Sound. Looking forward to clear skies and the only smoked item is to be the seafood. In 2021 in Seattle, it will be a wonderful time for us to meet face to face once again. 2022, midnight lights on Liberty Lady, Send my regards to Broadway and evening prayer where Alexander Hamilton is buried. The Cathedral of St. John the Divine, Peter Ennis, Chief Sacristan, and his team of vergers will host the 2022 Vergers Conference in the Big Apple. Trinity Church Broadway will assist with some of the conference offerings. Expect a world-class parade of speakers, presenters, and events that weekend. 2023. 2023 is currently being considered by parishes in two different parts of the country, California and Florida. We are wanting to have a venue in a different part of the country for those traveling and to have a fun site as well. So stay tuned, and we should have this decision made before this time next year. If you have a company of vergers in one of those two states and would like to host this event, please contact me through the Verger Guild before this Thanksgiving, please. 2024. Don't tell me you can't get there from here. Lobster rolls and chowder bowls. Anybody? The beautiful Diocese of Southeast Maine will be hosting our 2024 Vergers Conference. Thank you, Hurl Hendon, for putting together the host committee for the 2024 conference. Looking forward to that warm Maine hospitality and those cool, clear evenings. 
2025. The Vergers Conference for 2025 will bring us to the heart of our country on the 30th anniversary of an event that rent the heart of everyone in our country. For this conference, we will enjoy in our community, in, in our coming together in fellowship, and we will plumb the depth of our faith in our church and in our country when we meet in Oklahoma City. The city will be having a special commemoration on this anniversary year, and the conference host, Darren Herndon, will be starting to piece together this conference together over the next couple of years. This should be a truly moving and meaningful conference year. So that concludes our report. So to recap, 2021 Seattle, 2022 New York City, 2023 to be decided, California or Florida, 2024, Southeast of Maine, 2025, Oklahoma City. If you wish to help these conference hopes host in their respective conference preparations, I'm sure it would be greatly appreciated. And when those conference hosts reach out to you, please do all you can to help. Thank you. Thank you, John. I am so, I cannot tell you how excited I am to know, one, where we're going in the future, because it's great not to have, all the, have any of that be secret, because there's no point in that. It's great to be able to plan. And isn't it nice to be able to think about, uh, in spite of John's really bad New England accent, isn't it great to think about going to Maine and California and uh, Seattle and all these different places that we just can't go right now. That that's like we'll be we'll be talking about this for years, and it's really cool. And John and and uh, hosts, everybody else, thank you for the work that's already gone into this. And for uh, Diane and Michael in Seattle, we can't wait to see you next year. So anyway, thank you so much. I'm going to share my screen one more time. We've got two more things, and then we're going to take a quick break. 